Championship. It's a circuit that's known actually between Formula One drivers anyway as Monaco without the buildings. It's apparently incredibly difficult to overtake here, but I think we're going to prove anybody wrong this afternoon. You can see in the top left of your screen for just a moment there anyway, it's between 28 and 29 degrees Celsius air temperature this afternoon. It's a very, very hot day at the Hungara Ring. It usually is warm whenever we do come here. We had a fantastic pair of races in 2021, one of which was affected by rain and was incredibly interesting when it came to the strategy and how the drivers handled the wet conditions. Gabriel Torelli took an emphatic victory last time out. And if you go back and watch that one, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Here's your grid then. Four big hitters right at the front of the field. Nicola Milan and David Puget on the front row, followed by Anthony Girardo and Mark Gio on row two. Then we have the highest placed Challengers Cup driver alongside the highest placed Gentleman driver, Quinto Stefano. That's five Milan competition cars in the top six. Nikola Milkovic is seventh ahead of Jerzy Spinkovic in eighth with Alessandro Brigatti in ninth with Thomas Pekar alongside him. Then we have Gabor Tim alongside Nico Abea. Behind them is Mariano Alonso, the Argentinian driver alongside Cristiano, sorry, Christian Ricciarini. Then it's Guillaume Mayo in 15th, William Mazzetti alongside him in the Progetto E20 motorsport car. Jacopo Chimenez for SA Corsa is 17th with Horn in 18th place. Jumping up to 19th after an amended grid is Yuso Pantia. He's alongside Stefan Polderman with Henrik Seibel and Rene Steenmetz on row 11. Behind them we have Chen Hanlin and Michel Fai. And at the back row of the grid we have Gabriel Alonso and Andreas Stuckey. Now keep your eye out for Andreas making his way up the order because he made a mistake in qualifying, which is what put him right to the back of the grid. But he's certainly a driver that has the pace to be right up there this season. He's currently third in the championship in Clio Cup Eastern Europe. We have two championships effectively, or six if you're getting really picky, this weekend. So in Clio Cup, we have Clio Cup Europe, Eastern Europe, France, Spain and Italy. Five different championships. The drivers could choose to compete in two of each over the season, or two from that list anyway. This weekend is Clio Cup Eastern Europe and Clio Cup Europe. Mark Guillo currently leads the Eastern Europe standings with two wins and two pole positions. He's also got three top, uh, sorry, four top three finishes, so three podium spots for him as the championship has gone on. But further down the standings, actually, is Anthony Gerardo. He's eighth in the championship at the moment on 100 points, but he's won and got on pole in every Eastern Europe race he's done so far this season. And he's actually gone on pole for the Eastern Europe group here as well, ahead of Mark Guillo. Nicola Milan leads Clio Cup Europe at the moment with three wins and four podiums to his name, 249 points. Mark Guillo is also in that category as well, so it's an important weekend for Mark. He finds himself fourth on the grid with a bit of work to do. However, the man that has taken pole position every weekend except this one has been, you guessed it, Anthony Girardo for Milan competition. He's taken all six pole positions in Clio Cup Europe so far this year. And this is the first time he is not on pole in the category. It's quite remarkable, really. But Nicola Milan, he has just been absolutely on form around here. He is a 12-time, sorry, 13-time champion, is Nicola Milan. He's won Clio Cup France seven times. He's won Clio Cup overall twice. And he's also a four-time Clio Cup Spain champion as well. So there he is, the number one machine with the beautiful Castrol livery on it. David Puget, his main rival from last year, starting alongside him. It's great to see the two of them back together on the grid again. As in, right in the close vicinity of each other. But once again, we find David Puget in a bit of a tough spot here because the Milan competition cars, like I said, there's five of them in the top six. And the main sort of duel that we see between the two big teams in this championship is Milan competition versus GPA racing. GPA only have David Bouget right up there in the order. They've got four cars this weekend to uh, Milan competitions, five. They've had as many as seven or eight at some race meetings, both of the teams. They take up most of the grid sometimes. It's quite remarkable. But we have Horn, Gabriel Alonso, and Mariano Alonso as the other three drivers that will be joining David Puget this weekend. Mariano Alonso is the highest place of them on the grid, except David, who starts 13th. We just caught a quick glimpse of him there in the white and blue machine. They all run the same liveries. Speaking of liveries and white and blue ones, perfectly picked up by our cameraman there is Nico Abea. He's got a new sort of, a new brand identity 
for this weekend onwards. The gorgeous white and blue car. It used to be dark blue and pink, actually, earlier in the season, but the team has a new logo. Nico has his own different look about it as well, and the whole thing looks really, really good. There's the 107 car as well, just going through a shot. That's Christian Ricciarini. Keep an eye out for him. He's always exciting. He's not in the, either of the top fives at the moment in Clio Cup Europe or Eastern Europe, but he's a very, very fast driver, is Christian. He's a previous Clio Cup Italy champion twice as well. Won it in 2009 and 2016. So he is certainly one to watch. There are the two big hitters from last season, Nicola Milan and David Puget on the front row of the grid. I can just see them out at the front of the commentary box here at the Hungara ring as well. An absolutely beautiful circuit. It's my second visit here in a month, actually. I'm very, very lucky to have been out here twice in just a couple of weeks. And I'm sure Clio Cup is about to provide everybody with a massive amount of entertainment. Looking at the grid forming up out of the window, it certainly looks wonderful. And we hope you're ready for a lot of fun. 25 minute race plus a lap. So quite a long time for these front tires to survive, but Michelin make a very good tire and they can deal with the punishment. The second half of the season then in the 2022 Clio Cup gets underway and it's a lovely start from the third row of the grid by Matthew Lanapudon. Nikola Milkovic has moved all the way over to the right-hand side to try and squeeze Jerzy Spinkovic, the Polish driver looking to make early ground. But David Puget has got ahead of Nikola Milan on the way down into Turn 1 and he's keeping it all the way down the inside. Nice and tidy, we've got Gio side by side with Lana Pudon. He tries to go around the outside of his teammate. Is he going to make that work? I think there's contact between Gio and Lana Pudon. There's a car going way out wide. I think that's one of the Brighetto cars. There's a couple more further down the order doing exactly the same. Look at that though, Lana Pudon in the white car defending their fourth place ahead of Mark Gio. Behind him, you've got Quinto Stefano. There it's Jerzy Spinkovic. In there is the 105 car, which is another driver that's sort of new to the championship this weekend. The 105 being driven by Alessandro Brigatti. Nikola Milkovic loses out to Thomas Pekar, but everybody makes it through the first couple of corners. Nice and tidy. I think Andreas Stucky making up quite a bit of ground from the back of the field there as well. Up through turn four we go, skipping and hopping their way through there. David Puget goes out very wide. Lana Poudon defends the inside from Mark Gio. Quinto Stefano locks up. Spinkovic looks down the inside. Does he get it tucked in? He doesn't. Brigatti has to pay to get back in. He runs that far off the exit of turn five. Then into the chicane. Puget goes a bit deep on the way in. That means that Nicola Milan surely is going to get the run on the exit. Look at the way they attack those curbs though. These Cleos can really absorb a hard hit onto the curbs. They're very entertaining to watch. There's Gabriel Alonso at the back of the grid, number 62. You can see Brigatti is all over the road at the moment, isn't he? He's really putting a lot of effort into these opening couple of corners. There's Andreas Stuckey in the white and black car, just in the middle there of what looked to be Horn and Chen Han Lin. And down the inside, look, there's Spinkovic down the inside of Quinto Stefano. There's contact, Quinto turns in. I don't think he knew that he was all the way alongside, and Spinkovic is going to lose a bit of ground. One car that's gone past is Brigatti, and down the inside goes Milkovic. They're three wide into the penultimate corner. Thomas Pekar has to back out of that good awareness by Thomas. He's a very, very good driver, is Mr. Pekar. And look at this Milkovic and Spinkovic all over the place, trying to outdo one another. And in the middle of that as well, we actually have Gabor Tim in there as well, the Hungarian driver on home soil. But at the end of lap one, it's David Puget, Nicola Milan, Anthony Girardo, Matthew, Lu Matthew Lanapudon. I knew I'd get his name wrong in all of that. Mark Gio behind him, then Quinto Stefano leading the gentleman drivers ahead of Alessandro Bugatti, Nikola Milkovic, Jerzy Spinkovic, and Thomas Pekar. And breathe. David Puget still leads. And look at that, there's a big send up the inside from Jerzy Spinkovic. Milkovic has to get out of it. I don't think he saw him coming either, to be honest with you. Behind them as well, in the mix, is still Thomas Pekar. Pekar's got uh, three cars, actually, for Carpec service out this weekend. Yusso Pantier himself and Henrik Seibel. And car five, Anthony Girardo, has a penalty. Now, my fellow commentator David Addison and I discussed Anthony Girardo a lot last year and the fact that he's incredibly fast, is Anthony. Like, he's probably one of the fastest drivers in the championship, if not the. And to be honest with you, he just gets in trouble every so often with these little penalties and these little things that just act as a bit of a thorn in his side. And unfortunately, he's... Well, he's, he's cooped up another one as well. Quinto Stefano again turning in. There's a car alongside him. That's the second time we've seen it now and has something broken on the car. I'm not quite sure there because he was weaving around a hell of a lot on the exit, whether that was in protest or not, I'm not sure. But now they're still side by side. Oh, I think there was more contact. Maybe a bit of red mist descending there. Quinto comes back on ahead of Jerzy Spinkovic, who's going to try and go around the outside. Lovely, lovely opportunistic stuff by the unique racing driver. And again, it's just not enough room down the inside of Quinto. Nobody could get past that, Cleo, but... I think Quinto's just not quite leaving the gap down the inside, and Brigatti goes back in front. Milkovic now ahead 
of Stefano, who runs slightly wide, makes contact with Thomas Peckard. Gabor Tim's in there as well, watching all of this. And behind them is the 93 machine of Nico Abea, thinking, flip in, egg, don't scratch the paint, boys, it's a new livery. I want to keep it nice and tidy. There's a good fight going on behind that as well, actually. Guillaume Mayo, Christian Ricciarini, Mariano Alonso, and Stefan Polderman in there. Stefan's currently second in the gentleman drivers category. Big send again by Milkovic. Him and Spinkovic are going to have to just slug it out in the car park after this one, I think. They can't separate them on track. Three wide there. Here's a look at the start. Watch the dark blue car on the right-hand side. Anthony Gerardo didn't look like he jumped the start for me. Maybe he moved a little bit before that. Straight off the bat, though, you can see on the far left, Milkovic as wow. Well. Look at that slide by David Puget. I did think he ran a lot wider than it looked on the way in. The whole field just piling their way down the start finish straight right now outside my window, all slipstream one, one another. And there's the move, look, you can see Spinkovic is alongside for quite a while in his defence. And I think Quinto didn't quite realise he'd got that far alongside or he thought he was going to back out of it. And there is contact on the way into the chicane, which I think maybe we saw it was off camera, so we, we saw the aftermath of it, but not the actual incident. I think maybe a bit of red mist descending between the two. But look at how this top five has broken away. All of the fighting behind has let David Puget, Nicola Milan, Anthony Girardo, Mathieu Lanaboudin and Marc Guillot all get away. And that's actually good for Anthony Girardo. He's currently in third position, but with a five-second penalty, he actually will not drop further down than fifth. He will drop to fifth place, and that'll be it. So that's not such a bad situation right now. And if they can continue to move ahead and get away, then it is all, all good for Anthony Girardo. Now, the slipstream in these cars is absolutely huge as well, so in this championship, you need to be in the right place at the right time. And being in a sort of pack like this, I don't think they're going to get much slipstream in any, or in any form from Anthony Girardo. But if they stay in a slight pack of five like this in the quintet that they're in, they could all try to work together to stay far ahead of the guys in 6th, 7th and down, because there they are, Brigatti ahead of Milkovic, Spikovic, Pekar and Abea. As well, sideways in the background, that's Alonso, and he still sideways, somehow saves it. That's the beautiful nature of front-wheel drive cars, that was a hell of a save, but I imagine he's going to need the spare race suit for race two after that one, because flipping egg, that'll tear a hole in it. Unbelievable. Very sideways, but that's the thing in these cars. Because they're front-wheel drive, the rear end is just along for the ride, really, and if you throw the weight around too hard one way, then the other, it's easy to get an absolute tank slapper on us. There is Quinto Stefano losing another place. Here's a look back at it. Look at that sideways into shot for Alonso. Loses it, but he's on the grass, and that's a more loose surface, of course. And then it digs in on that little service road that we had, and then he suddenly gets more grip. Now, a man that's hoping he's got more grip right now is David Pouget, leading this race ahead of Nicola Milan. David Pouget has not won any races in Clio Cup Europe this year, so he's looking to finally get one in the books. He had a fantastic time in Clio Cup France at Manicourt, where he took both race wins overall over the weekend, but when it comes to the group itself, he doesn't have any wins so far in Clio Cup Europe. They're not competing for points in Clio Cup France this weekend, so... They need to always have that sort of idea in the back of their minds. But it is not all about the same championship. And that's what makes this championship, I don't want to say complex, but it makes it all the more interesting. You know, there's always something to fight for. And at each race meeting, there is something different. As mentioned, this one is Europe and Eastern Europe. Next time we go to Mugello next week, and that's going to be Clio Cup Italy in France. And then for every race meeting after that, the next five, we have three groups in each of them. Europe is included in every single one. And, of course, then we have Eastern Europe and France, Italy, Spain, all, of them, all combined together. Ten-second penalty for cars 55 and 58. That is Chen Han Lin and Rene Steenmetz for jump start, unfortunately. So it looks like there's a few of them that have been caught out here. But look at how close the field is still together now. There is Marc Guillaume down the inside of Mathieu Lanapoudon. He goes up into fourth position back where they started this race, actually. But Mathieu still leading the Challengers Cup at the moment for the younger drivers and less experienced drivers in the field. So Mathieu holding station. This is a replay. Now Milkovic is ahead of Pekar there. As, oh, that's Quinto Stefano taking a bit too much curb and then running very wide at turn five. Obviously no time gained through that, so nothing to worry about really, other than maybe just losing the one place. Here come the leaders, and look at that gaggle in the background. You can still see they're all absolutely glued together. So, so close. 
Well, the top three starting to close in now. Anthony Girardo, he'll be watching his mirrors to see how far ahead of the other guys he can get. And I can tell you now, there's seven seconds between Lana Poudin in fifth place and Milkovic in sixth. So Anthony Girardo is going to be just fine, and he's just done the fastest lap of the race as well, a 204.970. Fantastic, fantastic lap. David Pouget did a purple sector two on that previous lap, though. So he's certainly still got the pace as well, but Anthony's just using the slipstream to keep himself in touch here with his teammate and team owner, Nicolas Milan. Milan competition, of course, owned by him and run by him with his many customers that he has in the team. It's a fantastic squad and a really good bunch of guys as well. I've got quite friendly with the Milan competition lads and they're all really, really good fun. They, they certainly enjoy these racing weekends and make the most of them. We had a good old laugh at Mizano as well, watching the Porsche Cup race at night, actually. That was very, very good. Thing. Anyway, gear was starting to break away from Mathieu Lanapoudon right now. Mathieu's dropped away a little bit. You can see the gaps between each car there on the left of the screen, which is an interesting feature. So Gio 2.4 seconds behind Girardo. Lanapoudon just four tenths behind him. But then Spinkovic, who is now ahead of Milkovic, is up into six. But they are seven seconds back. And that is, of course, good news for Anthony Girardo. It means he's not going to lose many places. Usually in Clio Cup, if you have a five-second penalty, that drops you about 20 positions because it's so, so close. Now, Brigatti has dropped a couple of places in this field as well, actually. He's got the left wing mirror. You can just see it there flopping around like a spaniel's ear in the wind. You'll see as he gets on the brakes now, it sort of droops down a bit. There you go. They're very strongly tethered onto these cars, the wing mirrors, so they do a good job at clinging on once there has been contact, which is a plenty in this championship, but not in a malicious way. Just close racing, to be honest with you. There's Gabor Tim. He's just outside the top 10 at the moment in 11th place, but that beautiful, beautiful GM Sport car. Going pretty well, to be honest with you. He's ahead of Guillaume Mayo, also in the Challengers Cup. Now, here is car 62. Ah, now, that's not what we were looking at. That is Chen Han Lin down the inside of Frank Horn. Horn tipped very sideways around the final corner. I think he survived it. Looks like he's still running. He's in the gentleman drivers category. And we've still got 14 minutes of this race left to go, so plenty more action coming your way, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it so far. This top three is becoming more and more intriguing. I think Nicola Milan feels now that he's under a bit of pressure from Anthony Girardo, and he needs to get on with this, because at the end of the day, they may be teammates, and Nicola Milan may be the team owner. But I will not stop Anthony Girardo having a go and trying to win this race outright. Anthony and David Puget had some fantastic battling at Zandvoort as well a couple of weeks ago. Zandvoort was a fantastic place to be. Look how high they get over the curbs. David Puget straight lines the second part of the chicane, though. Not sure that's going to go down too well with the guys behind, but still could argue that he lost a bit of time by having it on two wheels over the first part of the chicane. Still leads the way. He's doing a good job so far for GPA Racing. Look at how sideways they come into shot. They were told at the beginning of the weekend that if you're outside the red and white curbs with all four wheels, that is considered as off the track. So you'll see them running all the way out wide and just keeping the inside two wheels just about touching that curb. These cars are all about momentum. They're not the most powerful things in the world, but they're about 200 brake horsepower, so they've got some good poke to them. Well, obviously, in cars with less power, you need to carry momentum more often, and it's all about how good you are in the corners and keeping the speed up. So Puget moves over to the right, because Nicolas Milan will get a hell of a slipstream right now, and it's going to be the same for Anthony Girardo. The gap has gone up between Girardo and Guillo. And here comes the move. Nicolas Milan looks to the inside. There's a big lockup from Puget. He likes a lockup with the right rear. Nicolas, slight overlap, maybe a bit of a kiss on the bumper there, but it would have been very minimal. And I don't think that's too much for them to worry about. But down the hill they go into turn two. Hard on the brakes. It's very tricky for them because you're going downhill and it suddenly flattens out a little bit there and then dips down against turn three. Manage the weight to the left and throw it to the right not to take too much of the curb and rotate the car. These guys are three of the very, very best in Clio Cup racing. Nicola Milan, if not the best of all time. He continues to show everybody exactly how it's done, but right now, Puget showing him how it's done. 
holding this lead well. He's putting the car exactly where he needs it as well when Nicola comes to knock on the door. Look at the way they bounce and bobble their way over the curves. I love it. I love that shot out of the chicane. And they throw it left through turn eight and turn nine. This is like a slower version of turns 10 and 11, actually. It's a lot tighter. And then turn 10, pretty flat out in these cars. It's a very high speed, long sweeping left hander. You can use a bit of the curb to help the car rotate on the inside and lift the right rear off the ground as you go through. Hello. <laughs> as you go through turn 11. Never mind lifting the right rear off the ground. Anthony Girardo had all four wheels off the ground at one point there. The car skipping its way through the corner. You can see on the left hand side of your screen as well the C and the GD little emblems are the challengers and gentlemen drivers. So it's Lana Boudin, Spinkovic, and Milkovic, the top three in challengers at the moment. And then gentlemen drivers is Quinto Stefano, Stefan Polderman and Rene Steenmetz. Stefan Polderman and Rene Steenmetz, uh, two Dutch drivers. And both absolutely fantastic to speak to. They are really, really good guys. They'll be branded um, on their cars by Oranjedak, which means orange roof in Dutch. And I'm not going to give you any points if you guess what their business is in, basically. What they're involved in. Anyway, we just saw Quinto Stefano for a second there, just behind Gabor Tim and Nico Abea. He's the leader in the gentleman drivers right now. The leading Challengers Cup driver in Cleo Cup Eastern Europe is Yusuf Pantier. Actually, he finds himself at the moment in... I can't even see him on the audience, to be honest with you. Just have a look down the list. He's 15th at the moment. He's not having the best of times of it. Jerzy Spinkovic is the head Challengers Cup driver in Cleo Cup Europe. Now, hard onto the brakes we go. Into turn two. Look at this little quartet now. Led by Brigatti. He's got Nico Bayer, Gabor Tim, and Quinto Stefano all in there. Now they're going to try and take advantage of the fact that one of his wing mirrors is flapping around. Oh, and that's more than flapping around. He's having an absolute nightmare through turn four. Really wiggles the car very hard, squeezes itself off the circuit. But all of a sudden in that, Tim has closed in behind Nico Abea right now. Nico's having to think about defending. Makes a little dive down the inside. I think there was contact. There was contact into the chicane, and Quinto Stefan has gone into the back of Gabor Tim. Can he keep it going and keep it out the gravel? Actually, I think, you know, I think it's broken something on the front right. Either that or he was trying to steer it to the right. But that is Quinto Stefano out of the race and out of the gentleman driver's lead. Stefan Polderman is surely going to inherit that. But it looked like Gabor Tim went to go for the inside and maybe Quinto just thought the gap was going to open up and he was actually going to go for the move, but he stopped and the safety car has been called very quickly as well. Good response by the safety team here at the Hungaro ring, but clearly that car is in a dangerous position. Anything can happen up into that chicane. It's very easy for cars to go straight on there or make a mistake, so, of course, we do not want the worst-case scenario of that car being collected by another. And the race is neutralised slightly. So it's an interesting scenario, this. There is... Yeah, look, you can see. I think Gabor Tim went back over... Yeah, that front right is definitely broken, isn't it? Gabor Tim moved to the inside to look at going past Nico Abea, but then came back out of it and moved back over to the left. And I think Quinto was just expecting him to stay over on the right, so he filled that gap, went a bit later on the brakes to try and take advantage of the situation. And one of the nicest blokes in the paddock, Quinto Stefano, is unfortunately out of the race. May not be one of the nicest blokes in the paddock to speak to after this one, I'm afraid. And Gabor Tim must have an issue as well because he's come into the pit lane to have the car looked at. He must have taken quite a hefty whack on the left rear. the car I think he's just trying to speak to some of the team members I can uh, I can just see them now down in the pits and they're jacking the car off as well so I think they might he might have picked up a puncture or something on that left rear from the contact so they might be looking to change that so hopefully they can get that car back out again to try and pick up some points but under safety car we go then current order is David Puget Nicolas Milan Jerzy Spikovic, Nikola Miltovic, Thomas Pekar, Alessandro Brigatti, Nico Abea, then Christian Ricciarini, Guillaume Mayo, Yusuf Pantia, Stefan Polderman, Mariano Alonso, Andrea Stucchi, who's come from the back of the grid, Eric Seibel, Jacopo Chimenez, then William Mazzetti, Rene Steenmetz, who is now second in the gentleman drivers, with Horn in third, Chen Han Lin, 
Michel Fay and Gabriel Alonso. Then we have Gabriel Tim in the pit lane. And of course, Quinto Stefano, unfortunately, after an amazing qualifying in sixth, he is out of the race. I'm not sure how quick the recovery operation is going to be. It looks to me like Gabor Tim's car has gone out of the pit lane, so I believe he is back on track. And the fastest lap of the race so far is still lap 204.970 by Anthony Girardo. He did that on lap four of the race. An average of 126.2 kilometers an hour. That's pretty quick, isn't it, considering that these are not the fastest cars you will ever see around this circuit. They are mighty impressive, though, these Clio Cup cars. This is the Clio Cup 5 machine. It's a gorgeous little car. They're really charming machines. If you do get a chance to see them up close, wherever you may be around the world, there's plenty of Clio Cup championships all over the globe. If you ever do get a chance to see one in person or you see them on the belt for something, do go and watch, because as you've seen once again this season in Clio Cup, as we travel all over Europe, it is incredibly entertaining racing. Stefano's car being hoisted away, and there is Quinto trackside as well. I'm sure, he wouldn't be a, a very happy bunny right now. But as mentioned, next week we go to Bugello in a week's time for Clio Cup Italy and Clio Cup France. Then we have Hockenheim in Germany lined up, where we saw arguably the best race of the year last year, race two at Hockenheim. I still maintain it's the best race I've ever commentated on. It was insane, it was great fun. Then that is at the start of September, so we have quite a big break from Mugello before we go to Hockenheim. Red Bull Ring, we visit there a week later on the 10th and 11th of September. And then we have almost another month's wait until Monza in Italy, which is where I'll make my return to the commentary box. And then we have two more race meetings, one week later at Paul Ricard in France. And then on the 12th and 13th of November, we head to Catalonia in Spain, where we go to Circuit Barcelona de Catalonia. And if you're going to attend that race meeting, take my advice from last year and pack something to wrap your up. Because I mistakenly thought that Spain is hot all of the time. Turned up last year with nothing with long sleeves on it and froze to death all weekend. It's very windy up there as well, to be honest with you. Still, the fact of the matter right now is that the safety car is still out. The car is still being hoisted away and I believe we'll get one more lap behind the safety car. Lights are still on. So they will do one more circulation before the safety car peels off and everybody gets back under green flag racing. So we're not going to have too long to get this race sorted out. There's a bunch of fans. Clearly, one of their drivers that they're supporting is going well. There's a lot of fans in the sort of the top part of the pit building, which is all covered up, and it's like a, a sort of rooftop balcony. It's a fantastic thing. You can stand completely above all the pit buildings, see the entire pit lane and start finish straight as well. There's a lot of wonderful viewing points around here at the Hungara Ring. Even from up here in the commentary box, which is at the back of the grandstand on the main straight, you can see the far end of the circuit up at turn five and all of the grandstands up there. And they make their way down into the chicane. You can see them as they come into turn 12, the tight right-hander before the end of the lap. There's a lot of Gorgeous, gorgeous scenery around as well. And if you drive down the paddock and sort of look off the end of the circuit down towards turn one, it's almost like it drops off a complete cliff face. It's incredible a bit of scenery. So, out of the first sector we go, up towards the chicane, and we'll probably get, I'd say, two laps left of this race. Get one more before the timer hits zero. And we'll have one more final lap. So 
now we just wait to see who makes the best start here. David Puget needs to get this right because he's not got long at all to hold on. Just wait and see then, shall we? He's still weaving a little bit as they get into the final corner. But we are going to have two laps to go then at the Hungara Ring in Cleo Cobb and David Puget Instantly having to defend from Nicolas Milan, who, to be fair, has gone with him quite well. Gerardo is closer to the back of Milan, though, and Spinkovic, importantly, is right on the back of Mathieu Lanapoudon. Now, that is the lead for the Challengers' Cup as well in this race. The white triple one machine and then the one, two, five behind. But look at that, Gerardo trying to go down the inside of Nicolas Milan. They all lock up. I think there's a bit of contact, and Gerardo goes third to first, runs Bouget out of road a little bit sideways into shot. Please don't tell me that's Stefan Polderman, who was leading the gentleman drivers. He comes back on in front of one of the Carpec machines. Try and figure out who that was. It went completely sideways, but look, all of a sudden, the top six all together. Nicolas Milan tries to go down the inside of Marc Guillaume, who's now jumped up into third position. So all of a sudden, there's been this massive shuffle. Gerardo leads Puget, Guillaume, Milan, Lana Poudon, and then Spinkovic. And luckily for Spinkovic, all the guys behind have had a bit of a scrap as well, and they've separated themselves slightly. That is Thomas Pekar that is next up. As sideways through turn four goes Gerardo off the track as the regulations state anyway. Milan tries to put his nose down the inside of Mark Gio, and all of a sudden, the temperature has risen here at the Hungaro Ring, and I don't mean in a literal sense. Gerardo keeps it nice and tidy through the chicane, doesn't smack into that first curb. He uses quite a bit in the second curb as we whoop off the road there for a moment, goes Thomas Pekar. Awesome to see the field make their way through. I think Frank Horn had a bit of an issue there over the chicane, maybe straight line the second part of it. Brigatti still with that wing mirror hanging off the car. Yusuf Pantia in the middle of the field. Andreas Stuckey's gone well. He's up to 14th from the back of the grid. He's gained 12 spots during this race. There is Yusuf Pantia with Mariano Alonso right behind him. And they all dive into turn 12 now. Really flick the car into there. You've got a long time to stabilise it on the way out before you get to turn 13. This long sweeping left-hander, which goes uphill as well. Halfway around the corner, the grip sort of comes to you, but then it slightly levels off before you get up here into the final corner at turn 14. At the final corner we go then, and on to the final lap here at the Hungaro Ring in the first race of the weekend of Clio Cup. And the top four are all together. It's one big slipstreaming train and then a slight gap back to Jerzy Spinkovic, who's going to go the furthest down the inside here. Puget makes it very clear that he wants a big send, either that or he's defending. He knows Gerardo's going to have a five-second penalty, so unless Gerardo wins this race by five seconds or more, the car that's second across the line is effectively going to be the race winner. And I think that safety car would have been a massive thorn in the side to Anthony Gerardo as well, because it's bunched the field up and it means he'll drop more places once the final result is calculated. There's Brigatti down the inside of Nico Bayer. Nico is wise to it, gets a gorgeous cutback on the exit of turn two. Spinkovic going well at the moment as well. He's now ahead of Mathieu Lanapoudon for the Challengers Cup lead. He's done a great job to get that done very quickly after the restart. He's a bit sideways on the way to turn four. He keeps it all together. Turn five, another very difficult corner in these cars. As it comes up the hill and then sort of rises over the crest on the exit into the chicane. Gerardo going well as, wow, he's high on two wheels there. Very, very high up indeed. Keeps it all under control, though. These guys know exactly what it's like to be on two wheels. We see it a lot in Cleo Cup. There were a couple of cars last year that they got so much grip when they're on two wheels, they rolled over at Imola. Still. It's all very close inside this top six, especially. Is Gio waiting for an advantage here? He started this race fourth on the grid, right behind David Puget now. Puget will effectively win this race if he just finishes where he is, right behind Girardo. I'm not sure if they know that he'll have a penalty, or even if Girardo knows, to be honest with you. They may have told him on the pit boards that they hang out on the start-finish straight. It's looking good for David Puget. Looks like it's going to be his first win of the season in Clio Cup Europe. It's nice and tidy around the final corner. It's a fantastic drive by Girardo to win it on the road, but David Puget takes the victory. 
here at the Hungara ring. Mark Gio is going to be second ahead of Nikola Milan. And Jerzy Spinkovic wins the Challengers Cup. And it's Matthew Lanapudon behind Thomas Pekar, Nikola Milkovic, Nico Abea, Alessandro Brigatti. Wow, Yusuf Pantia, Mariano Alonso. Stefan Polderman, Andreas Stuckey, Gerardo is classified. Somehow, I think he might have been a 10 second penalty rather than a 5 second penalty. Gerardo is classified 15th. Unbelievable. But David Puget wins the race. It's his first win this season in Clio Cup Europe. And a very well deserved one at that. As across the line, with massive applause, you might have heard that in the background there actually. Gabor Tim, the Hungarian driver on home soil, gets a big cheer from everybody as he crosses the line at the back of the field. And here is the resulting traffic jam as they try to cram everybody back into the paddock and get everyone sorted out ahead of our podium presentation. We do the overall podium up on, funnily enough, the podium at the circuit, and then there is a sort of trophy presentation afterwards. But there you go, David Puget wins the race from Mark Gio, and Nicola Milan finishes third. Jerzy Spinkovic wins the Challengers Cup just ahead of Mathieu Lanapoudon, who had a really good race and finished in fifth. Thomas Pekar recovers to sixth place after a lot of hard battling. Nicola Milkovic finishes in seventh at Nico Abea, Alessandro Brigatti, and Yusso Pantia holds some decent points in the palm of his hand there with 10th position overall. Mariano Alonso is next up with Stefan Polderman, Andreas Stuckey, Christian Ricciarini and Anthony Gerardo is classified in 15th position. Behind him in 16th place was Guillaume Mayo with Henrik Seibel, Jacopo Chimenez, then it's William Mazzetti and Horn. Finishes second in the gentleman drivers in the end. It was not Stefan Polderman that went sideways, so I'll have to try and figure out which one of the drivers that was at turn one. Michel Fai is 21st with Gabriel Alonso in 22nd. Rene Steenmetz finishes 23rd, that's fifth in the gentleman drivers. Chen Han Lin, 24th, 25th is Gabor Tim, and unfortunately not finishing the race. Only one car to get a non-finish is, of course, Quinto Stefano. David Puget there with Benedict. His wonderful wife, fantastic supporter and amazing, amazing team member, if not team owner, effectively. Mark Gio out of the car. You can see just how hot the, all these drivers are as well. He's probably saying, why did I win? Clearly some discussion there going on about something during the race. I'm not sure what that would be all about. Unfortunately, my French is very limited. But it is incredibly hot here this afternoon. Gerardo has pulled in to the top three or the top spot. Hamarosan érkeznek majd a versenyzők ide föl a dobogóra a kiosztó ceremóniára. In Clio Cup Europe. Has his picture taken as well. Messi indeed. That was a hesitant hug, wasn't it? With a driver that sweaty, you don't, you don't always want to hug them. <laughs> it's always the case. He gets a Michelin hat to go with it. Ah. And now we just wait for the drivers to make their way up. Now Nicola Milan's car has been pushed very hastily back in the pit lane behind all their cars to make sure that they can put it in the right place in terms of the presentation. They've moved the number three board out of the way. I can see Laurent Orhan down there as well. Laurent's an absolute star of the championship, bless him. He's just moved the number three board away for Nicola Milan, but now they're moving the board back and putting it in place. This is all being overseen by uh, Tariq as well. I see him up on the podium, watching all of this unfold down there. Obviously, they don't want to move the cars around too much. They don't want to bother starting them all up again. They'll just push them about. As Nicola now gets out of the car, and he's having a look at the front end of the car. I think there was a touch between him and David Puget down into turn one when Anthony Girardo took the lead. I think there was a slight bump in the rear of David's car. Puget is walking over to him now to undoubtedly congratulate him and discuss the race. Another hard race between the two of them. But from the body language, it, it didn't look like Mark was too pleased with, uh, with the outcome of that one. And Nikolai is certainly having a discussion with him as well about what went on there. He shrugged his shoulders a little bit, so maybe they, uh, they aren't too chuffed with what's gone. Let's have a look back at what went on, though. Here was the start of the race. Apparently, Anthony Girardo jumping that one, but I'm not yeah. sure if he did. But still, the stewards make the decision, and I have to go along with it. It was a great, great start to the race, though, for David Puget. Down the inside, took the lead very early on. 
not really much in terms of shenanigans further down the order. Everybody behaving themselves until, of course, there. Contact between Jerzy Spinkovic and Quinto Stefana. That was unfortunately the start of things going very quickly downhill for Quinto. It was a good lead by Pouget, though, in the opening stages. The top three really breaking away. Some fantastic battles through the order as Guillaume Mayo made his way up through the pack. Guillaume eventually would go on to finish 16th. Quinto Stefano and Gabor Tim making contact, though. The local hero, especially in this championship, unfortunately involved and would have to pit. And the safety car came out as they recovered Quinto's car. There was a little tap here between Nicola and David Pouget into turn one. Maybe that's what they're not too chuffed about. As there was contact in the background. Anthony Girardo did a fantastic job in leading the race. Carried on leading it all the way to the end as well once the safety car had been in. But unfortunately for him, it would mean that with the penalty earlier on, the field was closer behind and he would not take the race win overall. He took it on the road, but Puget wins with Mark Guillo second, Nicola Milan third. Jerzy Spinkovic wins the Challengers Cup and Stefan Polderman takes a win in Gentleman Drivers. And now everybody has made their way up to the podium. We will have them out in just a second to give them their trophies. And of course, we will have the French national anthem as well. All three drivers on the podium are French, two of which from Milan competition, one from GPA Racing. David Pouget is a good 57 points behind Nicolas Milan in Cleo Cup Europe at the moment, or he was coming into this race meeting anyway. You get 50 points for a race win, 42 for second place, 36 for third. And that applies in each class as well. So within Clio Cup Eastern Europe and Europe, we have Challengers Cups and Gentleman Drivers Cups as well. So effectively, like I said earlier, six championships here this weekend. And when we have our triple header meetings, essentially, with three different groups in one, like Hockenheim, for example, in a few weeks where we have Clio Cup Europe, Eastern Europe and France, there will be nine different championships on offer for the drivers to compete for. Nicolas Milan and Marc Guillaume now have five podiums apiece this season. Still no race wins, though, for Marc Guillaume in Clio Cup Europe. Nicolas has taken three wins so far in this current campaign. So they're just introducing the podium now. Nicolas Milan adds another podium to the already impressive tally that he's got in his career. As mentioned earlier, 13-time Clio Cup champion across different series. And they're giving the trophies on the way out. And then Marc Guillaume comes out as well. And David Puget from GPA Racing takes the overall race victory and the win in Clio Cup Europe. Handshakes all round from the guys. A trio that have shared the podium a lot. Not even just the last few years, but in Clio Cup for a long time. There you go then, the French national anthem for David Pouget and for GPA Racing as well. They'll now pose for a couple of pictures on the podium, I believe, before we get things underway in the next race of the weekend, which is the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine. My friend Chris McCarthy will be jumping on the commentary duties for that in just a moment. And we will now say goodbye, so I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good afternoon.